Thank you for joining us for American Medicine Today. I'm Kimberly Bramell, joined by our executive producer, Ethan Euchre. I am indeed here, <laughs> and it's always a pleasure, of course. <laughs> yes. Well, especially because we have Nikolai Jalev. He is a professor of medical biotechnology with Alberta University in Dundee, Scotland. Mm -hmm. And they have leading research that's allowing scientists to grow tiny human hearts in the lab in an effort to cure heart disease. I find this absolutely astounding. It's pretty amazing. Professor Jalev, how are you doing, sir? Very well, thank you. Um, thank so you tell us, me. absolutely, tell us a little bit about this technology. I mean, to, to the layperson, it's pretty amazing that yeah. you can develop, and they're not just tiny human hearts. They beat, they're alive, they yeah, work. Like 30 beats per minute? Yeah, it's pretty, Unbelievable. it's amazing. How did you folks uh, develop this technology? This is correct. We are very excited about this uh, new development. The reason we, first of all, develop small hearts is in order to be able to fit them in, in what's the industry standard for testing. Normally, industry works with 96 well um, plates, which are, are very small wells. Mm -hmm. So, of course, we could make these hearts bigger, but they, they won't fit in the wells, and we won't be able to, to test a lot of compounds. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that was uh, one of the reasons they're so small, just one millimeter, to be able to fit in the industry standards for screening. You just answered one of my questions, which was going to be, <laughs> I mean, big? that's great that they're little and you can work on them. Why not make them the size of a normal yeah. human heart to work on? Small is beautiful. Of course, we can make them bigger, but then the, this testing will become more expensive because we'll need bigger petri dishes, more, more media, etc. Small is beautiful. They don't have to be big for this particular purpose because um, small people have small hearts, but they're still perfectly formed. But the reason we develop them is mostly to test new drugs. And for that, we need a lot of hearts rather than big hearts. And then, um, as I said, they, they behave physiologically like, like a real heart. They, they beat. And more importantly, they respond to different stimuli. Okay. And what we were able to do this, this year, and we're very excited about, is to induce diseases in these mm -hmm. small hearts. So that we use them as a useful test system to test the efficacy of various drugs to cure different diseases, in our particular case, heart hypertrophy. I want to back up for a quick second. Um, you build these hearts for, or grow these hearts mm -hmm. from uh, stem cells, correct? Correct, yeah. We have human stem cells, and then we program them to differentiate as cardiomyocytes. I got gotcha. you. And where, where, where do these stem cells come from? Because obviously that's for the past decade been a pretty touchy yes. subject about stem cells and this and that and mm -hmm. that it's coming from fetuses and things like that. Where do you folks get your stem cells from? We have two, two sources of uh, stem cells. One is we reprogram normal human cells, okay. skin cells, into cardiomyocytes. We, in the past we used uh, uh, stem cells from human embryos, which don't come from fetuses, but come from IV uh, techniques, uh, embryos which are no longer used for anything uh, can be used as a source of um, stem cells. Got it. Okay. And, and for people that don't know about stem cells, mm -hmm. they're basically the cells that when a fetus is growing, pretty much, like you said, you can program them to become anything. So they're, they're like dummy cells almost where mm -hmm. you say, become a liver cell, it'll become a liver cell. Or they're, they're pretty amazing things, are they not? Yeah. Correct. Yes, yes. Stem cells can be programmed artificially in vitro mm -hmm. to become any type of cell. And uh, later they can be programmed and made into organs. And that's, that's the future probably in stem cells research and stem cells application. Mm -hmm. Because you can imagine if you are able to <clears throat> create a, a spare heart for a person who is suffering from, a, from heart disease. But by the way, my mother today is, uh, had to go to hospital. She's going to have an operation, heart operation tomorrow. Oh, oh no. gosh. And, you can, and uh, you can imagine how technologies like that can um, help people who suffer from heart diseases. You don't wait, you don't have to wait anymore for, you know, victims, mm -hmm. car crashes, etc., cetera, to, to donate your, their hearts to you or to the patient. Correct. You can make... Uh, you can have your own. Uh, your own heart, yes, which won't be rejected by your immune system at the time when we require it. It's just unbelievable it's technology. The The one thing I wanted to bring up, Nikolai, is that it talked about the heart cells. And they, the amazing thing that I saw was that they'll never get cancer. I thought that was yeah, unbelievable. That. Yes, yes, that's one. A heart is uh, one of the tissues, heart muscle, which mm -hmm. will never get cancer. Mm -hmm. The reason for that is that they don't divide. We are born with a very small heart mm -hmm. with a defined number of cells. 
and the heart grows because individual cells grow and become bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. But if you lose one heart cell, then you have one heart cell less. Okay. So you have to look after our hearts very well. And, um, they don't get cancer. The closest to cancer is heart hypertrophy, when the heart becomes bigger than normal. Mm -hmm. And people with big hearts, mm -hmm. you know, it's not a good thing in, in medical terms because they die from a sudden death. Now, I just have a question. Is there anything that can help fix that? Yes, we we are trying certain drugs, and the reason we need a suitable model. Before, okay. uh, scientists been using rat models, but rat heart is different from human heart. Right. So we really need to test them on human hearts. And as you know, human hearts is very difficult to get, very difficult to find volunteers mm -hmm. to volunteer their hearts for heart testing. And this technology will help us to have... We additionally thousands, we grow thousands of mini human hearts in the lab and we can try a lot of different compounds in order to find the best drugs to cure heart hypertrophy. That's really wow. the, the biggest uh, benefit and that's where we are so excited. And the fact that we can grow them very small, mm -hmm. but still perfectly formed and uh, physiologically relevant, yeah, allow us to test thousands of compounds. And Professor, how did you, just to back up a second, how did you even figure out that you could build Jesus. a heart that beats? It's just beyond me. That's the property of the cardiomyocytes. I mean, in fact, individual cardiomyocytes, even one cardiomyocyte, if you put in a petri dish, it will beat spontaneously mm. without external stimuli. That's amazing. Uh, when you assemble them together, they, they beat in synchron, like mm -hmm. one big tissue, like the heart beats. Uh, so... That wasn't the, the most difficult problem to make them to beat. The most difficult thing was to make normal cells into cardiomyocytes. Right. Uh, after that, you know, they know what to do. How far away are we from the application of your technology on humans, human trials? Stem cell technology is developing very rapidly. Mm -hmm. you know, as, as you know, probably the first experiments were done in Japan at the beginning of in the 2005, 2006, then we had the Nobel Prize, okay. 2012, mm -hmm. and things we thought were impossible five years ago now are possible. Mm -hmm. We can differentiate, program, and reprogram cells. We can now go even further, develop uh, organs from stem cells. We can cause diseases in these organs and use them as a very relevant test system for drugs. So I, it's difficult to predict, but... Um, uh, I'm normally an optimist, but even as an optimist for me, I was impressed by the, this fast development the last couple of years in, yes. in the biotechnology field with the well, human genome sequencing and uh, other areas. So I would say maybe a couple of years we'll be able to find suitable compounds which will help us to control this disease. Oh, well, thank you very much, uh, Nikolai Jalev, uh, professor from medic in medical biotechnology from Alberta University in Dundee, Scotland. Amazing advancements in medicine. Fascinating stuff. And from what he sort of teased as to what they're going to wow. be, the direction they're going to be going in, uh, in the realm of what Dr. Benatti does with the spine and stem cells and things like that, we're, we're going to keep an eye on you, Professor, and we'll mm -hmm. certainly have you back on, okay? It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much, Nikolai.